Solar electric cars demand high efficiency electric motors that can deliver ample output power while maintaining a small footprint. Designing custom motors specific to our car's specifications allows us to maximize efficiency while offering no compromises on performance. I'm Alex Knoll, and I'm on the Motor Design sub-team here at the University of Minnesota Solar Vehicle Project. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the principles of operation behind brushless three-phase DC motors. I'll also be giving you some insight as to how we test these motors for use with our prototype solar electric vehicles. Let's get started. Brushless DC motors operate in conjunction with the specialized motor controller. This motor controller contains a collection of power transistors that fire in rapid succession to create three AC waveforms that are each 120 degrees out of phase from their neighbor. This current is passed through a series of copper wires wound around steel. The electromagnetic field created by this current acts upon a rotor that contains several neodymium permanent magnets. You can think of this as a three people pushing on a merry-go-round. A three-phase system is used because instantaneous power delivered to the motor is the same as the average power sent. Essentially, the symmetrical nature of the input waveforms ensures the motor will be producing the same mechanical output. To ensure smooth synchronous operation, the motor controller needs accurate feedback on the position of the spinning shaft in order to correctly fire each phase. The motors for our latest car, EOS, used a resolver to measure the degrees of rotation. The exciter, pictured here, produces a magnetic flux that travels through a special rotor on the drive shaft. The spinning shaft distorts this magnetic field creating two sinusoidal waves that can be sampled to provide a rotor position accurate to one twelfth of a degree. This accuracy can be increased by using a four-pole rotor, but one must be sure that the exciter and motor are compatible in that configuration. This video shows the erratic behavior that is exhibited when a four-pole resolver is used with a motor whose pole count is not divisible by four. Testing and characterizing a custom electric motor is a very important step in the process. To do this, we use a dynamometer to collect important efficiency data. The basic principle behind a dynamometer is this. You have your electric motor, powered by some voltage source, that is spinning a shaft going into a load. Essentially, in a lossless system, the electrical power in should equal the mechanical power that you get out. Or, in other words, the voltage times the current should equal the torque times the angular velocity. Here is a CAD image of our dynamometer. The device under test, or DUT, is mounted on a movable arm and connected via a Lovejoy to a torque transducer. This device measures the torque between our test motor and our load motor. The load motor operates in the opposite direction of the test motor. We set a target speed for the load motor to achieve and allow it full control over how much current it needs to maintain that system speed. The device under test is set to a target velocity much higher than that of the system. It cannot achieve this velocity because the motor is only allowed a variable percentage of available current. Increasing the current to the device under test proportionally increases the mechanical load and subsequent torque between the motors. Sweeping from low to high torque set points at various system velocities allows us to construct efficiency maps like this one. This is helpful as it shows us which speed and torque operation points are optimal and gives us valuable power to drive data that helps us determine cruising velocity on a solar car race. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about three-phase brushless DC motors. If you'd like to learn more about the University of Minnesota Solar Vehicle Project, please check out our website at umnsvp.org. Until next time, I'm Alex Knoll. Thanks for watching.